Hi everyone, Exeter Rider, thanks for joining me once again. So this week is my full review of the Honda ADV 350. Now, as you can tell by the first ride video, I was actually really impressed with the first initial impressions. Uh, this scooter has been proved to be everything you want in a scooter. Good on the motorway, good around town, good on fuel, light and easy to handle. Uh, it feels like it picks up really, really well. On to the motorway. So we have the screen in the highest position at the moment. This bike gets to 70 in no time. It's very, very easy, very relaxed. You never would have thought that you were on a 350, the way that this handles motorway traffic and traveling. The bike is very, very relaxed, even though I'm at six, six and a half thousand revs at 70. Because the engine is relatively detached from the bike itself, when you consider it's way low down. It's handling it way above its station. Well, I'm going to put myself out there now and I'd even say that this ADV for doing this, this type of work is actually a good touring bike because as I say it's handling th this very well. Uh, it's very very stable. I've got loads more if I want it. And it's very comfortable as well. I can move my legs back along the footboards or straight out to the front. It's really punching above its weight on this front. Now the windscreen is taking all of the wind off of me and I'm just getting it a little bit at the very top of my helmet. It's just a bit of noise more than anything else. But again, with the hand guards and with a decent screen, it's doing a cracking job of this. Right, I'm going to take you through the switch gear here because it's much easier to do it with a helmet on. Now, on the left hand bar we have the indicators, the hazards, the menu buttons, the horn, the traction control on and off and also a menu button here to flip between the different modes. On the top we have a pass button, high beam and low beam. And let's take you through the screen. So on here we have the traction control, which I can turn off. If I hold this button here, then it is now telling me that the traction control is off, okay? Which I just want on anyway. So. We have the rev bar around here, the time, the Bluetooth connectivity, which is also voice activated as well. If you're into that sort of thing, then this is uh, a, quite a nice setup. So you can control it uh, via your helmet and Bluetooth. So very good indeed. A rev bar going around there, a fuel gauge, the miles per hour, time at the top, average fuel consumption, outside temperature and trip A. Now if I flip between, the different modes if you look up here using this button here I can control all of those settings so outside temperature or battery voltage moving down I can have average fuel consumption A or B time elapsed A or B and then moving down again we have a trip A like so trip B and the total mileage so oh and the range too i need to fill up which is 59 miles this bike honestly you fill up with fuel and it just seems to go on forever it, it really you can ride this bike a lot without spending next to nothing on fuel which is a really good feeling then on the right bar is really simple stuff kill switch and the old start button like so It's a real pleasurable, light bike to go around exploring with. Not only that, but it's also very good with a pillion. I've had a pillion on here a few times now with my son and, and missus. And uh, 
again it's handled superbly it's one of those bikes which you can have a pillion on the back and you don't even know that they're there because it's so soft and it handles so well and the bike is 100% solid it never flexes in the chassis like you used to get a lot with uh, with scooters years ago used to crash around quite a bit on the suspension that's the thing of the past with this bike it's excellent and it's also surprisingly fun to have a get a bit of a lick on as well it's got a lovely lot of uh, pull on the engine as it as it builds up the speed it just the power seems never ending on roads like this it's not a fast scooter as such but when it does build up the speed it does hold it very well no matter what the terrain it has to tackle it's just always ready to give you that roll on power that's needed sometimes so for exploring country lanes and going out on beautiful B roads like this and exploring whether you're a solo rider or with a pillion it's fantastic it's got a massive tick from me not only that the suspension is fantastic as well the Showa front forks and the rear suspension which is Showa as well with the piggy pack canisters there uh, again it's it's a nice ride well, let's see what the ADV is like in traffic obviously this isn't going to be any narrow filtering here but the bike itself is quite narrow the handlebars are above car mirror doors I'm in a very commanding riding position people can see you from a, a long way back uh, the brakes are you know good as well they'll bring you to a, a quick stop if you need to overall I mean this is what it's one of its main fortes is going through traffic and weaving in and out it's a big bike it's a fair old size physically uh, but it, it it almost feels like a more of a 500 cc scooter uh, but as I say it's very very uh, maneuverable very light it always surprises you every time you have to duck in and out of traffic you know just how maneuverable this bike is it really is an absolute piece of cake Looks like we've got some tighter filtering to do down here. I would say that this is where this bike will uh, mainly live, I suppose. In tighter traffic, in tighter situations. And weaving in and out of traffic, certainly in London and places like that. I think it's fair to say that that's a, a relatively good tick for the ATV350 in traffic. It will get you right up to the front of the line, no problem at all, every time. For the walk round, let's talk a bit about the bike and the styling. Uh, the scooter is bang up to date uh, with styling, I think. I think it's an actually uh, a, a good looking modern day scooter, where some can be a bit quirky. I think this just looks really stylish and really good. So I, I personally like what they've done with the styling. Fit and finish is very, very good. Again, it's typical Honda, what you would expect. And uh, it's, it's all solid, everything's tight. There's no, you know, plasticky bits on it that, that keep on flopping around. It's a it's very, very solid scooter. Who's this bike gonna be suited for? I think it's gonna be a brilliant bike for new riders that don't want to have a geared bike for whatever reason, whether it's a mobility uh, issue or, whether you know you just don't want a geared bike you just want to keep things simple look no further this is a very very good scooter to uh, to have here uh, in price comparison with its competition i'd say that this is probably the uh, uh, down the cheaper end of the scale and probably a better scooter in my view because it is up to date it has got the traction control as well um, it's not going to be you know, a full off-roader, of course, because we haven't got the ground clearance. We have got a, a small bash guard down the bottom there, but that's not going to do a lot. Essentially, this is still 
what I consider a town scooter uh, stroke light off-road. So if you live out in the stick somewhere, uh, out in the country, should I say, then, you know, th this will be a good choice. For carrying a passenger, it's got a nice wide pillion seat on the back, loads of space to move around. We've got the grab handles here. Um, although the bike looks big and it does look, and I mean that in a nice way, it looks considerable considering it's a 350. It, it feels like it's more like a 400 stroke 500cc scooter. I've owned a Suzuki Bergman in the past. That was a big scooter and it, it was uh, physically big and quite heavy. This, every time I look at it, I think you, you kind of take it off the side stand, you think, oh, it's going to be quite a lump. And in fact, it's, it's so light. And then you remind yourself that it is actually a 350cc. Got the nice wide handlebars as well, which do make a difference. So if you do go off uh, off road slightly or some muddy patches, gravel, etc., and it gives you loads and loads of leverage on, on that side of things. We've got the uh, Metzler Carew tires as well, which are really uh, fantastic. They haven't faulted at all. They give you loads of confidence on cornering. I'm five foot eight, I've got a 30 inch inside leg measurement and uh, flat foot in there on both sides. Um, to put my feet up here is, is quite nice and also out the front there. Uh, even if you're a taller rider, then you're going to be all right uh, with putting your feet out the front there. When you're on the motorway, that's a very comfortable place to be. With it being a scooter, you have got lots of weather protection as well down lower here. So if it's raining, then you generally find that it will go right over you. The ADV does come with a center stand as well. So if you're parking into tight spots, then just pop it up on the centre stand in between another two bikes and you're going to be fine there. We have a three-stage adjustable screen as well. There's two little knobs, one on either side, and you just basically pull them out down to setting one or down to the bottom setting. Scooter is keyless ride. Don't let that scare you. This all looks complicated here, but it really is a piece of cake. So what we'll do, it's on steering lock now. I've got the key in my pocket and it's already activated so I can turn the steering lock off and we can turn it straight to the seat or fuel mode here, or the switch, should I say, as you can see, seat or fuel. The buttons are down here, that's for the seat. It's always interesting to know what you can get in these scooters, isn't it? A uh, huge amount of storage under there. So you can get a full face helmet and your jacket and gloves and any, you know, a few other bits and bobs. This is my helmet with the motor vlog gear on it as well. And uh, that sits nicely and I've still got room to put another helmet underneath at the front there if I need to. So closing it up like so, there you go, it's locked up. Walk in town, go and do your shopping, go and do what you want to do, brilliant. And the other one is for the fuel, like so. And then we turn it again, like so, to the on position, uh, then the screen will fire up and it's ready to start. So there you go, that ends the review. I will be putting up a last ride video of this bike, so look out for that. Uh, I will put a card up here now uh, for you to watch that. I also have a first ride of this bike as well, which is a little bit less serious and uh, it just lets you know what the bike feels like uh, you know, on first impressions. Thank you very much to Honda for the loan of the scooter. Uh, thank you to you, more importantly, for watching the video. If you have any questions about it, please put them in down below in the comments and I'll try to answer them. If I can't answer them, then I'll ask Honda and uh, I'll get back to you, all right? So uh, thank you very much to them. Would I recommend the bike? Of course I would, you know. It's uh, as a middle range scooter, uh, you know, mid power scooter, should I say. I think it's absolutely superb. And it's not just me that says that, you know, the people who've been helping me make the videos of this one have said the same thing. So. Um, yeah, I should uh, go out and test one if you can. If you're worried about the height of it or anything like that, then go and sit on one. I think you'll be surprised how light the bike feels and how agile that it is. So thank you very much and I'll see you next week.